Now, maybe you're the kind of person who thinks telling stories is just for fun. Stories are just something to watch on TV when you're bored. But there are some stories that have been going around the world for countless generations, for thousands of years. And as the little details of the stories change over time, we can trace how humans have changed over time. Because stories aren't just for fun. They're not just fake things to send children to bed with. The stories tell the history of the people. It tells the things they value or the things they used to value and the things that they want and the lessons they need to learn in life. So the story for today has a very interesting lesson and very different values than the ones you're used to hearing. Listen to this story and see if you can decipher what the ancient Greeks valued more than talent, what they valued more than skills, Today I want you to listen to the weaving contest. Now before I tell you the story of the weaving contest, I need to tell you some, you know, background information. There is this one character in the story named Minerva, and she was absolutely magnificent. She was the goddess of battle strategy the intellectual parts of war. And you often see her with this owl here. Minerva is the Roman goddess of wisdom and strategic warfare. In Greek culture, it is the same goddess and the same stories, but with a different name, Athena. But I can't start that story just yet because you need to know about her mother first. Here is a picture of the mother of Minerva. Her name was Metis. Metis was a shapeshifter, and she changed to escape Jupiter. Jupiter was the king of the gods, like Zeus was to the Greeks. So Metisus changed to escape Jupiter. Nonetheless, Metis became pregnant. Metis was afraid because she knew of a prophecy. Jupiter knew of this dangerous prophecy also. The prophecy said that his own child would overthrow him, just as he had overthrown his father. So Jupiter felt he must get rid of this unborn child. Therefore, he tricked the pregnant Metis into changing herself into a fly, and then Jupiter swallowed her whole. While inside Jupiter, Metis started making weapons. With all this banging and pounding, Jupiter was always in pain and he always had a headache. But this, of course, is not the story of her shape-shifting mother. And this is not the story of Jupiter. This is going to be the story of that baby to be named Minerva, who was still inside her mother, who was now inside her father. So as it happened, Jupiter asked the god of the blacksmith Vulcan to help him with this terrible pain, this constant banging in his head. Whatever was in his head had to come out. Vulcan took his very powerful hammer and he smashed Jupiter's head right open. Now Metis' baby was all grown up, and she emerged from her father's head, already dressed in full battle armor, carrying the weapons she and her mother had forged while inside. This baby that emerged is Minerva. So now you know where she comes from, and you know what kinds of personalities her parents have, because that will tell you everything that you need to know about the weaving contest. And thus begins our story. The story goes like this. Arachne was a proud peasant girl. She was a wonderful spinner and a weaver. The water nymphs journeyed from the rivers and the wood nymphs came from the forest just to watch Arachne dip her wool in crimson dyes and then take the long threads with her skillful fingers and weave these exquisite tapestries. Oh, Minerva must have given you this gift, declared a wood nymph one day. But you see, Arachne was a peasant girl which means she was very proud and very strong. She didn't think she needed to give the gods any credit for her masterful skills. So Arachne threw her head back and declared, Ha! Minerva taught me nothing. I've taught myself everything that I know. And with that, she decided to challenge this goddess Minerva to a contest. She told the wood nymphs and the water nymphs to go tell Minerva to call for a contest. She said, Let's see which one of us shall be called the goddess of the loom. You see the problem here, don't you? 
Now, see, I got to tell you, weaving is a very ancient art. Not too many modern people even know how to do it. There are some cultures around the world, like these people from Guatemala, who still weave in the old traditional ways. Their tapestries are phenomenal. And then using this technique, they can draw pictures just like anyone can with a pencil, but they draw it with rows and rows of strings. To form full pictures, it takes skill with your fingers, but it also takes foresight and grand intellectual design and real artistic flair. You gotta have a strategy. And my girl Arachne here, she had all of those things. But when she spoke about challenging a god, especially a goddess like Minerva, the wood nymphs and the water nymphs covered their mouths, frightened to hear such scorn heaped upon that powerful god, that god that sits atop Mount Olympus. And their fears were quite justified. Now Minerva, like I said, she was the daughter of a shapeshifter. So she disguised herself as a very old and very fragile woman with gray hair and 1,000 wrinkles. She disguised her hands as curled with arthritis, and she tried very hard to hide the celestial spark in her eye. And she started walking towards Arachne's cottage. And when she arrived, she knocked upon that door. And when Arachne opened that door, Minerva, disguised as an old, twisted woman, shook her finger at her as you shake your finger at a naughty child. If I were you, said the old woman, I would not compare myself so favorably with the great goddess Minerva. I would feel humble toward her and ask her to pardon my prideful arrogance. But you see, Arachne was just as tough as the goddess of war, tough as a nail and strong as iron. Arachne looked this old woman in the eye and said, You silly old fool, what do you mean by coming to my door and telling me what to do? If that goddess is half so great as the world thinks she is, let her come here and show me herself. And before Arachne's eyes, the old woman instantly changed into the goddess Minerva. Arachne's face flushed with shame. Nevertheless, she remained defiant and sealed her doom. Minerva, do you dare weave against me? said Arachne. Minerva only glanced at the girl, and the nymphs, peeking from behind their trees, cringed to watch such insolence. Come in if you like, Arachne said, bold and brave, stepping back from her doorway and bidding the goddess to enter. Without speaking, Minerva went into the cottage. Servants quickly dashed about setting up the looms. And Arachne and Minerva tucked in their long dresses and set to work, weaving against each other, busy fingers flying back and forth as they wove rainbows of colors, dark purples and pinks and golden and chrisms. Minerva wove a tapestry showing the twelve greatest gods and goddesses of Olympus. Minerva's tapestry was magnificent. It was trying to prove a point, though. It showed beauty and wisdom and strength. It showed the twelve mighty gods. She was trying to prove a point, but Arachne, she had her own point to prove. Arachne's tapestry not only showed the gods and goddesses, not just them standing still on top of a cloud, she showed the gods and goddesses going on adventures. Hers was a tapestry of motion, of running, of all the miracles and the wonders the gods were capable of. Anyone would look and would automatically know which tapestry was better, but Arachne did not stop there. Arachne thought that sometimes the gods abused the humans below. They took advantage of them when they should have helped them. They used their strength for their own reasons, not to help the smaller ones, the weaker ones. And Arachne put that on her tapestry as well. And to top it all off, Arachne bordered her magnificent work with flowers and ivy all around the edges. The water nymphs and the wood nymphs, they stared in awe at Arachne's magnificent talent. Her work was clearly better than Minerva's. And even the goddess Envy, who had inspecting it, said the damning words.
When Minerva heard those words, Minerva lost her temper. The goddess tore the rack off the tapestry and she started hitting the girl mercilessly until, disgraced and humiliated, Arachne crawled away. At last, moved to a little pity, Minerva finally said, You may live, Arachne, but you will hang forever outside and you will do all your weaving in the air and you will weave for the rest of existence. For as long as humans walk the earth, you will weave endlessly. And the vengeful goddess sprinkled Arachne with hellbane and all of the girl's hair fell off and her nose fell off and her ears fell off and her head shrunk to the tiniest size until she was mostly just a giant belly. But her fingers could still weave, and within minutes, Arachne was the very first spider on earth, and she wove the very first and most magnificent spider web. And you see now, don't you? You see the old lessons I was telling you about? Even if you're the best in the world, even if you're the best in the universe, if you brag about it, bad things will happen. Always, always stay humble. That's the lesson of the olden times. If you look closely at the stories today, bragging almost seems rewarded, doesn't it? Being tough seems to be rewarded. I mean, watch movies like Rapunzel and stuff, where she fought her way out of the tower. We like stories today of people sticking up for themselves, of people standing against the odds. But back then, back then as those ancient Greek times, it was a different story to tell. It was a different lesson to learn. 